the greatest pickup of all time. Stop. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And I've seen, you know, the rapid escalation and everything, but I've never seen this. I never. Because it's, it's the thing that I know that, you know, that's the, the next level for any, for any coach out there. <laughs> it's the next level for any coach. In seeing you do that, it was just a revelation for me. It's been a revelation being with this man. For some reason, I thought Barcelona was going to give me like this amazing woman this time. But I felt like it gave me you in a way that it uh, allowed me to see these insights because I don't, I'm more attractive now than I've ever been. And it's because I'm more me than I've ever been. And that'll be a practice for me for life. The greatest pickup of all time. What does that even mean? The greatest pickup of all time. Because you've seen everything, right? You've seen every kind of approach. You've seen every kind of pickup line, every kind of story memorized to impress a girl. But if there were such a thing as the greatest pickup of all time, wouldn't it have to be something totally other, a totally different language and physics of what we're used to, with no technique? It would have to be something universal, something underlying the way speak. Something underlying the way that we interact. Something timeless. And where would you start for such a thing? Where would you start? Stop. This is the best. This is the best. This is the best. People, people would never know what this means. I'm intentionally mirroring her body language, standing to the side. Now I face her, taking her hand, increasing emotional impact. My intent and expression. What thoughts do you think I'm having? What thoughts do you need to account for her thoughts to be safe from judgment and her sense of being judged? Wow, he's really relaxing her with that stare. Why isn't this awkward? This is the best. Here I could feel she was she softened, so now I soften and show my vulnerability. The little boy in me to meet and play with the little girl in her. I'm actually mirroring her, but with more than just my posture right now. No one, nobody's gonna hold her. And now my posture is intentionally more elevated than hers. Showing her strength and confidence. You're not gonna be any. That's not true. You just need an open heart and proper non duality mirror training. Calibrating to her emotionally, physically, and mentally using non duality mirror pairing. You can see I'm now a solid, safe, and open canvas to her. To resolve the creative pressure, she needs to paint to create and to get closer to the canvas. She's wondering where you came from. Any stars? Any stars? You can learn to do this with anyone. It's not hypnosis, but it is transporting. <laughs> Man, this is incredible. She likes my bold willingness to feel. See, women like a man who's unafraid to express himself. You know, you could turn it the other way around and say, this is normal. What is everything else? 
That's right. Maybe all these people, they're just creations in our theater and they don't really exist. I do agree. There's the chance. What I'm about to do now is the holy grail of seduction. I'm out of my head or thoughts just enough to read and then mirror her heart in a space I've created where she feels comfortable skipping weeks, maybe even years, of getting to know someone. The Dalai Lama said, Man, this show is genius. I've never met anyone who, to me, is a stranger. If you can see that you're not separate from others, you can naturally guide them to feel that they are not separate from you. Fast-tracking the heart, I can lead where the heart already wants to go. It wants to go home. So what does a woman want? It's funny because to provide what a woman wants beyond the intellect, beyond being a man, beyond your idea of being in control that you think seduction is all about, beyond language, you might find you have to do less with our nervous thinking minds. But less is hard to do. to see those girls looking. Look at those girls looking. Be honest now. What is this? Why did you stop me? Why? Yes, why are you here? You're going to try to think of, figure it out? No. and thoughts brought people together before language existed. See, women want to be seen by men. Women want to be loved. They want to have attention. They want to be fucked, just like men. And even though I don't know her, I can feel her need for intimacy, which is not different than my need. La vida es una ilusión. Say it right there. No, I don't believe you. I swear. <laughs> I trust you. Sweaty? No. It was hot then. Can you feel that there's one space pervading us well, totally open and loving? When we quiet our minds, there's only love. When you feel this arm with your hand? Is it you touching me or is there just feeling? Mm. But is it your sensation or is it my sensation? Just is. It's just sensation, yeah. completely into a stranger because we all love to love because we are love and 
If you don't know the other person, it must be love, loving love. The universe seducing itself. Find that pre-language ancient place in yourself so that you can bring it out in others. I can remember the moment I saw for the first time that the silence that is behind all my thoughts is the same silence that is behind everyone else's thoughts. Everyone has different ideas, has different dreams, have different ways of reacting and understanding, but the silence out of which all of that comes is the same silence, the same stillness. And if you have a home in that silence and that stillness, you can anticipate things, you can understand laws of cause and effect, and you can lead things and lead yourself into the life that you desire. So to start to find this language that is no language, find out exactly what this practice is. What you're seeing in this video is really the action of it all. It's kind of like walking into a pottery room and seeing tons of bowls and cups and glasses, but you really don't know what the clay is. You no longer are able to see just the clay. All you've seen since you learnt language is the bowl, the knife, how sharp the knife is, how fast the spoon is, how much water the jug can hold. This is our perception of ourselves, but find the clay and start to create a brand new self. And a self that speaks to everyone because everyone is working with the same clay. If there were such a thing as the greatest pickup of all time, wouldn't it have to be something totally other? A totally different language and physics of what we're used to? It's almost as if it would have to be a parallel universe so that you're seeing everything that you normally see, but there's a language working subliminally, sub-mentally, sub, sub in the way that we attract to each other, in the way that we desire each other, in the way that we feel without language. You know, in deep states of sleep, there is no thought. There is only deep stillness deep silence. And so then we think though, when we wake up, oh, Tuesday, I gotta do this, that, and that, my life starts. And the narrative of who I am resumes, and then the stresses and the anxieties and the depressions that are associated with that. You have this story of who you are because your thoughts are going and going and going and going. One lily pad to another lily pad to another lily pad, and that's how you see your life. Somehow, all those individual thoughts create this miasma, this great delusion of what we call my life. You think that your world is your world and her world is her world, and you think that you are this story. You think that you are these thoughts, but between every thought is silence. Between every, between every thought is silence. Every word. What has happened to us? What has happened to us that from a young, young age, we just learn to speak? The ideas we have of ourselves have entirely to do with what's coming out of our mouths. Because you say something and you perceive the way that the other person is perceiving it. So we've already, we're already doomed because our language is going to disappoint us. Our personalities continuously disappoint us. Isn't the way you stand in a cool way, or the way you look in a particular cool way, isn't that just another statement? 
But what is it to get beyond all statements and find a common ground from one person to another in such a way that immediately the part of you that you want to relate to her is readable by her? Just suppose for a moment you were able to experience that every thought you were having was just the shape of the clay in a different form in a different moment, but you had a real home in the clay. Then you wouldn't identify with every little thought, with every little obstacle, with every little imposition. Things would flow much more because you see the continuity of all things. And then you just might find that these thoughts don't matter so much. And then you just might find that you're spontaneously able, without any restrictions, to spontaneously and creatively and playfully come up with new thoughts, come up with new jokes. Free the mind just a little bit, not by like getting out into some tripped out state, but rather trip right in, trip right in to what's going on sub-mentally, sub-linguistically. So if you have a different vantage point, you have a different home uh, out of which you're experiencing these spontaneous thoughts, because they continue. So long as you're alive, you're always going to have new thoughts. You're always going to have new bowls and new plates and new things that are going to spontaneously arise out of the clay. But realize the clay, and you just might find that there's nothing holding you up at all. That this whole delusion that I am this on this course, that I am this person, suddenly gets challenged, suddenly gets reversed. Whatever that bowl is, or plate, or spoon is, is just a different shape of the clay out of which it is made. So experience yourself as the clay and then you can create anything.